and when we can re reach the mothers, mm -hmm. we can reach our children. Right. Because we have so many kids that are struggling. Uh, so when we when we reach the mamas, we can reach our babies. Right. Um, and also part of the mission is to we have seniors that don't have people to talk to. Yeah. Uh, and so one of the things is if you know seniors and if we can take them a meal or just call them and have a conversation and have something to be something to look forward to. Right. So that's that's the that's the mission of Ladies Let's Talk. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if anybody wanted to call you just to set up a meeting, um, yeah, I needed to get my phone for okay. my. Um, um, so if you have, you know, if, if women have issues, and I know this day and time we have, you know, we have issues with our children, our husbands. Mm -hmm. I want to be husbands. I, absolutely, the husbands we need to throw out the door. <laughs> Wives is not doing too much. That's not supposed. To. I'm just saying, because <laughs> you know, you know, it's a lot of us got say about four different types of husbands there. Then, yeah, you know, you go home, you be like, oh, he's still here, and you can actually have a husband that's all of those four different personalities. Ooh, he's a monster, one. so you don't know who you gonna mm. who you gonna who you see like, when, right when you get home. Yeah, <laughs> I always thought that was the exciting part about me. Or, he, he never knew. He never knew who he was going to Oh, be. he. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's, all, it's all of what you're looking for. <laughs> but to reach us, our Zoom, our Zoom ID is 822-824-1672. And that passcode is 908679. Can you read that again? And, uh. You can email me that. I would so when uh, we'll put it up on Facebook. Yeah, we'll put it up on Facebook. Okay, that Zoom ID is 822-824-1672. And the passcode is 908-679. And if anyone would like to just reach out to me, uh, I can be reached at 601-668-2471. Okay, great. And uh, and we and ladies, we have hope. So don't be afraid or don't be ashamed to call and just you know express how you're feeling, what you're feeling, what you're doing. And uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely, yes. always a light. Yes. yes. Amen. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for sharing with and us. And thank today. you, ladies, for having me uh, this morning. Uh, and you will come to church. It yes. was an adventure. I didn't know what to expect, but you made, but you both made it very pleasant. Oh yes, ma'am. <laughs> you know, we, we, you know, we put y'all out before the before the uh, thunder comes in, baby. <laughs> we, we don't, we don't need our guests to be sitting here looking at us like what? Look, so, we have we have decorum here at Coffee yeah. and Conversation. <laughs> Mm. And thank you so much. Crumpets and tea. Welcome, <laughs> and you're welcome. Anytime you have any, anything, just feel free to give us a call and you're welcome to come in. All right. Thank you. Anytime. And if you want to come in on, you know, a couple of conversations, you know, just, you know, come on in. Okay. Okay. You know, I mean, you, you might feel some kind of way when you leave, but it'd be all right. Well, I guess it's time for me to go now because I feel really good and I don't have to feel any different. <laughs> Thank you so much, Miss Evers. Yes, I have love. And you have a good day and be safe on your way home. Thank you. You know, because we know it's a storm coming. Oh, before you leave, tell us about, uh, did the storm affect Edwards? It did. There was a lot of damage, I think. They're thinking that one of the actual tornadoes actually came through Edwards. Uh, even on yesterday, uh, Tyson Foods came out and served hot plate lunches it's to people wonderful. in the community. That's wonderful. Yes. Um, there was a church that received a lot of damage, but a lot of homes because a lot of trees fell. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there were some people in the community um, that had like tree cutting services that came out. Um, Von Mack, he came out and he actually 
you know, started removing trees from people's homes, that's ruining that's the home. home. And he came out and did that. So the, the community came together at that time. Agreed. So, uh, yes, to help one another. So there was a lot of damage in the woods. And I know that the mayor did reach out early right. uh, to the Red Cross. So I was glad to hear that. The mayor is my, he's my church member as well. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mark, but, Marcus. No, no, um, not Marcus. Uh, uh LaKendra Caston. Yeah, the new the, 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 oh, mayor. the new yeah, mayor. And and he did reach out to the Red Cross early. And I, which, I haven't mm -hmm. gotten a chance to meet him yet. Yeah, and you tell him he needs to come and visit us. Yeah, I, I, I would do that. I would do that this morning. Yes, Excellent. definitely. Yes. Tell him to come and visit us and come on the show and just tell us what's going on down there. Absolutely. We would love to hear from him. Absolutely. I will make sure I do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, so much. Y'all have a great day as well. You, you too. too. Thank you. And tell him, don't be scared. We ain't going <laughs> Don't be speaking of speaking of storms, we actually uh, there's an anticipated storm to be coming in today. Mm -hmm. So I hope everyone within our, the sound of our voice have, keep your phones charged up. If you're in a um, if you're in an area or in a home that is maybe a mobile home or something like that, make sure you have access to be somewhere um, safe. Yeah. Yeah, in advance the of, storm last week, it really, you know, we knew, but we didn't know how much damage was coming with that storm. So we have to stop taking these storms lightly. Absolutely. Goodman, Mississippi and several other areas are still dealing with the damage. I do believe Goodman experienced the, the heaviest part of uh, damage, yeah. um, concentrated amount of damage as it pertains to that storm. And our prayers do go out to them. Uh, there was also a business in Elvis, I believe, that yeah. suffered damage. So we just want to make sure that today, as the storm is approaching, that you guys check now. Check on your yeah, family. Check is. on your loved ones, elderly. Make sure medications are in place. So I, I, need, I want to ask a question. So would that be the tornadoes coming through? Mm -hmm. Tan uh that's that you know, and I understand that's part of that. So would that be a case of emergency? Emergency, you know, like they did with the garbage. Would that would that be classified as an emergency? It well, probably won't because it's not garbage. Well, it will it will be okay. So here's the thing. You gotta treat I was trying, I, was, I know. I was, I was, look, <laughs> hey, you got you gotta treat these things uh as an emergency in advance of kind of like the garbage contract. But um, you, you have to treat these things as the emergency in advance of as it pertains to having preparation in advance of hopefully. Like the garbage contract. Uh, well, you know, we will hope with all contracts that in advance of we could get some uh, proper preparation in, uh, in place. But yeah, so 1-800-RED-CROSS. Uh, if there's any one who experiences any damage immediately don't wait call 1-800-RED-CROSS because Cross. uh this would be considered a state of emergency absolutely so on another note someone mentioned garbage contracts someone did you hear that pastor i did okay yeah oh well, that was you okay so let's talk about that so what are your thoughts on where things stand now uh, uh richards is said to take over uh, April, How many garbage trucks do we have? April first. Oh, a slew. They, I didn't see them, but I they heard there was a. Seven. No, they take care of a large portion of New Orleans. They have an extended amount of garbage trucks. A slew. I've been told. A slew. You've been told, but you ain't seen them. Well, no, I haven't seen them, but I've been told there are a <laughs> slew of garbage trucks. That, that was the word used. You, you saw a slew also. Okay. How many you stop by five? A plethora, a slew, an exorbitant amount, even. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and I'm going to say this I don't have a problem with who handles the garbage, what handles the garbage. But when you list it as a state, as a, as a state of emergency, see, that did something to me. Well, let me tell you why it can be a state of emergency. Now, the waste can create further disease, right? We are already in a pandemic. So we it's a state of emergency if the garbage doesn't get picked up. Because back in the day, you know, when garbage when Jackson used to handle their own garbage in the mix of shifting, if I'm not mistaken, from the city running it to right. uh, private contractors, there was like a buildup of trash and it was horrible in the city by all accounts. That's you know before my time. But 
So before your time, what was it? Hey, before my time. Before my time, baby. But you know what? My thing is this. Then we should, <laughs> we should be in a state of emergency because I see garbage everywhere for the past 20 years. I've been here. Well, okay. I've seen so garbage. Let's, okay. So, so you lead right into that. Now, why all of a sudden? Well, the garbage pickup and waste disposal is something different. So it would be a state of emergency if it didn't get picked up. But it would be in particular, and especially, uh, a bad situation for the city of Jackson because you already have people who have waste coming back up into their homes. And that, yeah, you have you have that raw sewage. I'm not going to use that other statement that uh, the one around. Stokes. Right. I'm not. I'm not going to use that one. But yeah, you have raw waste coming back into the homes of several citizens. You know, uh, the family on Sage Street. That fight went on for a long time. Yeah. And finally, they were able to get some relief. But guess what? There are others who are still facing the exact same issue right there on Rockdale Street and, and many others. So I live on Rockdale. I almost bought a house over there. Okay. Yeah, me too. Almost. But it was, um, but I, I didn't get to get the house that I wanted because when the programs for the houses that you can buy, the people who work for the city of Jackson get them before the people who live over there. Of so course. the program isn't actually used as intended. That's but what, that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. So, <laughs> anyway, we uh, <laughs> we have a lot of people who work for the city who don't live in the city, but they do. Um, they are afforded the opportunity to take advantage of the program that was meant for citizens within the city to purchase the property and, and house then near them. And then it continues to remain rental property, which I have no problem with people making money. I really say it's a good thing. But when these programs are intended for something else, like uh, creating home ownership and building a tax base, we should not have loopholes where, I don't know, the chief of police or anyone else can purchase a bunch of properties. Right. Which also really speaks to the trash and oh here you go, man. Okay. Which also speaks to the trash and oversight and overgrowth that's going on in the city. A lot of people who own these properties, code enforcement isn't holding them accountable. Why? Well, let's think, let's think about why. Because code enforcement is with the city of Jackson and their employees are the city of Jackson. And don't get me wrong now, um, there's this one police officer. I wish I could remember her name. All the property she owns, she keeps them immaculate all the time. Grass cut, the uh, houses look nice, and she herself even lives in the city of Jackson. But there are others, however, who know that because certain homes are in certain neighborhoods, whether it be Georgetown or Shady Oak, wherever, they can get away with literal murder as it pertains to not adhering to ordinances. So as people talk about crime, as people uh, want, you can't out police crime, but what we can do is hold these different departments accountable for doing their jobs. Well, I understand that the uh, public order director he quit yesterday. Well, that was a city engineer. He he was over. He was scared he was gonna get dropped. He, he may have he has an extensive mm -hmm. resume, so it may just be a case that he just had a better opportunity. Uh, Mr. Charles, I can't remember his last name. Yeah, but yeah, he like the last. <laughs> well, he was a city engineer. He he wasn't over public works recently, but I think we just we have to get to a point of holding people accountable. Hey, Carly, you on the air with Coffee and Conversation? Turn your turn your radio down. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing today? I'm good. Excellent. And yourself? Good. Good. This is Marcus Wallace, Miss Evers, and uh, I don't know if Yolanda is in there this morning, but uh, I was just riding and. And heard someone from Edwards uh, on the show with y'all this morning, but definitely wanted to call in. And, you want to come back? You want to come back? Come back to Edwards? No, I said you. When when are you coming by the radio station? Oh, definitely, I can come by anytime, anytime. But uh, we we we've been working instrumental with Edwards uh, since the storm. I worked in right. conjunction with Walmart trying to. Uh, Get some water and other things down there to them, and, and okay. trying to work something out now to get some more food down for the citizens. And my heart will always be with Edwards. Yes. But I also want to let you all know that I just recently moved to Jackson last week uh, to uh, prepare for my bid for mayor for 2025. 
So I definitely will be coming by um, to uh, talk a little bit more about that. Uh, God has directed me now to Jackson. I accomplished my goal in Edwards, so I'm, I'm headed to Jackson now. All right, and good luck to you, Marcus. Good luck, and I, we'll be seeing you soon. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Mr. Wallace. To come try to help make a difference, that's all. Ms. Wiles, this is Felicia Trip. Yeah, Yolanda's out on vacay right. today. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, she's hey, sailing the seven seas. Okay, how you all doing? Great, great. So you mentioned, Good. okay, so you starting out early with a bid for the mayoral race in Jackson, Mississippi, 2025. I know you just did say that God spoke to you. So tell me some of the things, what else comes to mind as to reasons why you're running for mayor for the city of Jackson? Well, you know, I just felt that uh, it made a lot of sense. Uh, when I ran for Transportation Commission, that was my first ever statewide race. I, I garnered 43,000 votes then. 22,000 of those votes came out of Hines County, and 17,000 of those votes came out of Jackson, Mississippi. And I actually beat Commissioner Simmons in Hines County and Jackson. And so, from a statistic standpoint, it makes all the sense in the world for me to, uh, you know, put a, you know, place of bid in, in, you know, land my name in the head to run for mayor. Uh, but the next thing is, is just, you know, a couple of different things. Uh, for one, to be in a uh, city that's 89% African American, and, but African Americans only get less than, it's now less than 5% of the opportunity that come out of the city of Jackson and local uh, black and white local businesses in the city are probably getting less than 20%. And something is, you know, something is wrong with that, 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 uh, that picture, that mathematics. Uh, in Edwards, uh, another thing, you know, I was mayor for eight years, two terms, uh, never had a city, never had a lawsuit under my leadership. We balanced the budget every year. I had one of the lowest crime rates uh, in the state of Mississippi. Well, that's because uh, you had some policemen. Well, had policemen and also created a task force. And, you know, one thing about crime, you can't look at crime. You got to fight crime. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, and, and I got some disturbing news this past weekend about downtown Jackson. There, there was a, a waiting list of about 100 people. Uh, trying to, you know, rent the lost downtown, that list has now diminished and the people that are staying downtown now are not renewing their leases. Well, um, the developers have been doing some interviews with people down there and come to find out that they're, they're not renewing their leases because they said they can't get any rest at night. And I've, I've, um, I've been experiencing living downtown now and the four nights that I've been there, uh, there is extremely a high volume of drag racing, recklessly driving, and discharging a firearm on downtown Jackson. Well, and for the police headquarters to be right around the corner, something. Oh, that's wrong a headquarters. That. Yes. Say that again. I said that's a headquarters. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't laugh, Marcus. I just asked. Yeah. Him. <laughs> you know, and, and so you know that that's a that's a serious problem with these people. That have invested all this money in downtown right. and these businesses, the nightlife could end the, the ambience of the nightlife could be very attractive for downtown, but but we gotta fine tune some things in order for that to happen. And uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 just uh I wanna bring uh the things that I did and it was that worked and uh you know just try to make the make a difference to the city, I feel personally right now, the city is like a scorned woman. It's very unhappy. And until we get, you know, if, you, if, 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 the, if the woman is not happy in the home, the home, the entire home is not going to be happy. Well, I and that's, that's the way I feel the city of Jackson is right now. It's a scorned woman. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't feel like it's like a scoring one because typically when we're scoring, we're strategic. And I don't see strategic implementation going on in the city of Jackson at all. So, as it, but and also as it pertains to downtown Jackson, they are at least afforded the luxury of being under the Capitol complex bill, so that the Capitol police, which they will increase soon enough, they just waiting enough of their people to take the spots as other people move out. But at least they are afforded to be under the Capitol complex bill, so that they have a different policing authority. So, in that position, tell me this: 
the the gunshots that you're hearing downtown and the drag racing we're hearing in other areas in the city of jackson because i'm born and bred and back again in the city of jackson what is it since we all know you cannot out police crime what is it that you're going to bring to the table that's going to reduce eliminate and interject or rather intervene so that some of the youth are not led in that particular direction. What are we doing to bring economic opportunities? Well, 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 a couple of things. Uh, one, um, under my leadership, there will, there will, there will not be other, other jurisdictions, uh, other law enforcement agencies over my jurisdiction. I, I, of course, I would definitely sit down across the table and ask all of these other agencies to come in and help us, but there is no reason why Capitol Police or any of these other police departments should come into the city of Jackson and well, have to, you know, basically, you know, patrol, you know, and be the, take the lead when we have our own police department. And there are some things that I think that would, if they were implemented, we could really solve this, just like grad racing. I think that there should be a, a specific precinct designated for downtown only that that includes walk walking foot uh foot patrol horse patrol and bicycle patrol and also unmarked vehicles where when you see when the drag racers come up up the you know up the curl and capital these unmarked cars can catch them it just all it's going to take is a few you know people you know uh going to jail and being you know road tickets or whatever you can get that under control and and as far as you know young people's concern i totally agree with you that's why it's very important to to protect and look after your local businesses because if you if you look out for your local businesses and make sure that they're getting the opportunities then that these businesses can do the things that we've done over the years such as adopt schools and and and, and grab you know, young people to be mentors and, and create programs for them. One of the things that hurts me the most is that because of the the decrease in local businesses getting opportunities, and of course I'm a prime example of one, I have not been able to do the things that I've normally done in the past, you know, with the schools with the schools uh, here in Jackson and the young people and, and you know, it's no secret to what I've done with the young folks in this city, but you know it's hard to do that when you don't when you don't have the revenues coming through your door like they used to. Absolutely. Okay, but Marcus, let me let me say this. I I heard you talk about the downtown area. What about What's, South it, Jackson, West Jackson? Well, let, and let me also inject into well, that, Mr. Wallace. Okay. Well, well, my, my, my take well on Mr. Wallace, Jackson I don't mean to interrupt you, Mr. Things. Wallace, um, can you hear me? I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I also want to add to that the Capitol Complex was a state bill that was passed, so it's not right. Yeah, so it's not going to be as simple as saying that you can come in and take that back. It's, it's in law now, and their area is actually covered down to Meadowbrook. So, in addition to what Wanda said and taking that into account, could you answer the question? Yeah. Well, when I when I when I say take the take take you know I wouldn't necessarily take it back or I would take what the state has what the state has approved but but the state the state is wanting to wanting Jackson to take the lead on the things in Jackson. I think the biggest problem and and being a previous mayor and being on the public side, there's a lot of equal tripping and a lot of miscommunicating going on. And I think if everybody just put their egos to the side. And not look at color or party preference and right. look at what, what it's gonna to take to improve the quality of life for everybody right. in the city. I think you can get a lot of things done. And, and you, then and you as, can. Far, as as far as South and West Jackson is concerned, I, I've always considered myself a visionary and I think the the, 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 the biggest way to to bring South and West Jackson back is to put the put GSU Stadium at the Metro Center. I think if they if that if they do that, it would come, it would it would bring South and West Jackson back tremendously because you're gonna have businesses that are gonna automatically come, such as hotels and restaurants with with GSU Stadium being there. And you know, a lot of people talk about that being not on campus, but you know, you really look at LSU for instance. LSU Stadium is about that distance from the actual 
campus, uh, but you know, but the, but the, but this but I would go and stay and 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 in a part of the deal talk with them about building the parkway from the campus all the way across from me. Well, Marcus, my, my my opinion with that because see, I'm a businesswoman, mm -hmm. and and I look at Jackson a, a, as a as a city that needs businesses. Um, right. My my opinion would be with that mall would build us a mall. We have no mall in Jackson. We have no decent stores. When you ride on the highway, you see the Metro Mall. You don't see nothing over there but tore up cement. As a city that's, that needs tax dollars, we need to be bringing in, and don't get me wrong, I love JSU like everybody else, but JSU can't bring us no tax dollars in every, every month. JSU's not going to do it. So I'm looking at put a mall right there, bring you some stores like Belks, Dillard's, stores that just because we in West Jackson, that don't mean I don't shop at those stores. Right. This zoo right. over here, right. we can take you, that. You, yeah, okay, wait a minute. Let, yeah. Wait a minute. Let me finish. This zoo over here, that is not a zoo. That's a, that's a pet cemetery. Move the zoo to Lakeland Drive. See, Kenny uh, Stokes and all them property. talking about, really yeah, because, and you can take all that property and turn it into a, a outdoor auditorium, just like in Brandon. You have the, you, it's over there. Fix idea. the streets. Give us something. Or you can turn that into Jackson State. But well, well, we need, well, we need businesses saying, in Jackson. Wanda, to, to add to what you're saying, you know, I totally agree with you. Uh, as far as the stadium is concerned, I, I mean, I, I, I agree with you as far as the, the about the mall, but but I think I, the reason why I said about the stadium is because we got to do something in that area to, to get people back, the traffic back flowing over there, and I think yes, the stadium would definitely attract traffic back over there that will then justify putting a mall back over there. As far as the zoo part is concerned, I totally agree with you. That zoo needs to be moved to Lakeland Drive because the Lakeland Drive is the children's area. Right. And, and the zoo would make would make so much money because during the when baseball tournaments are going on, we used to have when my son was growing up, it was like two or three hours in between game time. People would definitely go to the zoo. But but over there in the area on Capitol where you would move the zoo that is part of the health card of, you know, from 55 to 20. I would negotiate with the state to put a JSU school of, uh, school of medicine there. And most, a lot of black and black colleges, black college towns, there are what you call urban hospitals. Give, you know, the African American our urban hospital and JSU school of medicine right there, uh, on capital, which would definitely develop that area. And once, you know, that's done. It won't be as far from Jackson State as, you know, people, you know, think it is. I think one of the biggest things around here, though, we get, we get stuck in, we get stuck on brick and mortar just because it's, the building is there and we paid a lot for it. We, you know, they think it shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't tear it down or whatever, but if it's not working, you know, remove it and create something that will. So I'm totally with you on moving the zoo. Uh, and I really think that, you know, JSU could complement um, you know, could benefit from that that land right there on Capitol. You know, it's beautiful land. As it relates to the health card. Yeah, absolutely. We, we want to thank you for calling in. Uh, as a yeah. matter of fact, we have a guest in studio now. And we're going to be talking to you soon, Marcus. You come on by so we can have a conversation with our coffee. Absolutely. I will. I will. And I'll bring the coffee if I need to. Yes, sir. Thank you, love. Okay. Y'all have a good one. All right. And good luck on your okay. endeavors. Thank you. Bye-bye. Speaking of uh, uh Reverend Joe, we need to break. You know, I don't care. Move some of this stuff and clean this city up. These are the proud sponsors of coffee. Who is it? 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 Who is it?
we don't just do taxes, we know taxes. TCL, financial aid and services. Robinson Asphalt, where they're kicking asphalt with a purpose. Eric Robinson, 6601. <coughs> Six a slave production. Jackson Pine Health Center, located 3502 West Northside Drive, at the phone number 601 362 5321. Jackson, Mississippi. Short term rental of the same day delivery as service. Commercial and residential. Adrian, I know you're watching. Just give me the other sponsor. Just type it in, baby. Or you are invited to visit them at www.1800shortcrow.com. Mississippi Trail Gators, where they're breaking the road to you. Mississippi Trail Gators, food truck. That's the phone number 601 813 4222. Bundle of Love, Miss April Lisa, Boss Weevil Boutique. Located at 5440 in Sanctuary Place, Suite B2, at the phone number 601-826-1588. There are soon on the Soul Music Session, where we support the food. You can find there on Facebook at There are Sons. Soul Music Session, Experience Jackson, and by God's grace, where we are serving the community by God's grace. At the phone number 678-322-8098. Experience Jackson, where it's all about your experience. These are the proud sponsors of coffee and conversation. Found each and every Wednesday from 9.30 until 11 a.m. Right now, on the <laughs> yeah, she was sitting there. <laughs> I never see a shadow in well, like, are you covering your mouth for me or yes? <laughs> and we're back with coffee and conversation where you all know the conversation is always as hot as the coffee. And you know, um, our uh, my other co host, Yolanda uh, Singleton, she's not here with us today. She's selling the seven seas, yes. you know, she's cruising, yeah, yeah, she's queen. cruising. Yeah. So Go ahead on, Black Queen. You know you're doing the thing. And be careful out there on that water. Stella, and, don't, um, don't get in your groove back. I'm Stella. I got to go to Jamaica. I'll do this. Okay. Not now. Not now. We got guests, right? Yes. And uh, Boss Diva Boutique, you know, she's, um, you know, y'all want to get a good look for the spring and summer? Uh, Courtney, uh, she uh, has the, the new outfits in. And uh, she's customizing your wigs, Amazing. and she's doing everything, you know. And then she got you some body snatches. So you know, if you all need something to hold in, that's you know, right. That's why I look like I done lost some weight. Yeah, yeah. snatched in. I yeah, got snatched I'm in. I'm going on this sequin so I can walk around with duck map. I'm having sucked in so tight. Yeah. So you know, and she is, um, <laughs> you know, uh, she's customizing wigs now and. Yeah, you, know, you can see her on uh, Boss Diva Boutique, you know, on Instagram, and just, uh, you know, yeah, let's let's get right for the spring or something. Absolutely, because you know they won't let me be Erica Badu, you know, because remember Erica Badu went to the beach and she won't. Now you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna transition into Miss Kayla. Okay. <laughs> feel. Because yeah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Y'all keep on so. speaking. <laughs> Speaking of changing Jackson, we have, <laughs> we have, we have with us today Miss Caitlin Brooklyn from Refill, the Refill Jackson Initiative. How are you doing yes. this morning? Good. How are y'all? Doing it. We're doing good. good. Blessed and highly favored. Mm. So we were so excited to hear about the program that you guys are offering right now. So I'd love for you to dive right in. Tell everybody a little bit about Initiative Jackson and also 
what uh, you're gearing for this week. Oh, great. Well, thanks for having me here this morning, first of all. I uh, appreciate y'all. Um, so Refill Jackson Initiative, it's an eight-week workforce development program for 18 to 24-year-olds. Um, we do eight weeks of uh, a mix of classroom instruction. We have a class called Adulting 101. I can, I can probably use it myself, to be honest. But we <laughs> do financial literacy. Uh, we do uh, communication on the work site, showing initiative, professional dress, um, resume writing, interview skills, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also do on-the-job training. So our members go to a work site two days a week, and they actually work alongside the folks who are there. And they also, so they can practice those skills that they're learning in the classroom. But then we also have a staff person there too who coaches them. So if they're struggling with, you know, um, communicating with the supervisor, learning how to do new tasks, they have someone who's there to kind of coach them and help them through that. Um, we also have a full uh, social services um, team who mm -hmm. we have two social workers who work with all the members if they're facing a challenge like housing instability, um, food insecurity. Uh, we do help folks with um, child care, transportation, and then physical and mental health. So we kind of do some wraparound services there. Yes. And we have a career coach. So if our members want to go back to school, um, go straight into a job or into one of our internships, she works with them through the eight weeks to make sure they're in a good place when they're done with the program. Absolutely. That's, that's wonderful. That's yeah, wonderful. Absolutely. I think soft skills are often overlooked a lot of times. You're right. When uh, trade skills are offered. So this is, I think, absolutely uh, wonderful. It really Thank is. you. So, uh, what, so what do they need to do in order to get into this program? Sure. So our first day is actually tomorrow wow. <laughs> of our next cohort. Um, but they can still apply at any time. Uh, the application form is very short, and it's on our website at refilljackson, all spelled out, .org, backslash apply. Okay. If they're interested, just want more information, they can fill out that form, and somebody from our staff will call them back so they can ask questions. Um, if they're not quite ready for tomorrow, <laughs> Um, they only have to take the written exam, so we train them on that. Um, and after they graduate from refill, we have a savings match program. So a lot of our members are trying to save for their own cars. So when they're in refill, we match 25% of what they're able to save. And for a year after they graduate, we match at 10%. And we've had a lot of folks who take advantage of that. Our members have actually been able to save an average of four hundred and sixty dollars while 
there in the program, Excellent. which is pretty good. Absolutely. So we are trying to come up with some creative solutions on transportation. Once the used car industry, you know, dies down a little bit, we do have a loan program. Um, if our members or our graduates qualify, um, we will help them actually purchase their own vehicle and pay that off um, through a loan program through us. So I'm glad you asked that question. It's a major barrier, um, but it's something we're hoping to address as well moving forward. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I heard you correctly. You guys also offer a stipend, is that correct? Yes, I always forget to say that. That's important. Uh, <laughs> while they're in the program, uh, we do pay a stipend. They can earn up to $1,100 just you know, showing up and participating in the program. Mm -hmm. um, and we have employment incentives after they graduate. So if they mm -hmm. maintain a job at 30, 60, or 90 days, they'll get an incentive, a cash incentive from us for that as well. Okay, and I understand that you all are looking for like donations and oh, yes. things like that. <laughs> we are not. Um, my question to you is, have you reached out to the state the county and the city. Yes, ma'am. And when they're done, we are we are very blessed to have funding from uh, the state. We are funded by MDHS um, mm -hmm. to serve SNAP beneficiaries. So especially uh, for those uh, folks who are receiving SNAP, um, we do receive some funding to engage them in the program and do some of those incentives afterwards. And we also received funding from the Central Mississippi Planning and Development District um, for the Workforce uh, Investment and Opportunity Act funds to run these youth engaging programs uh, for workforce development. So we're very blessed to have those funding sources. Um, we're a Kellogg grantee as well, the Kellogg Great. Foundation. That's wonderful. Um, and we are also uh, lucky to have many corporate sponsors as well. Uh, Bank Plus has been very active, as well as Intergy, Atmos, um, Trustmark is one of our funders as well, um, and we are also receive funds from uh, a couple of employee giving programs, including Ross and Yerker. So the Jackson community has really wrapped its arms around us exactly. and helped us out, both with funding and uh, community partnerships. We work with Stupot. The Opportunity Center, uh, St. Dominic's, and Broad Street Bakery. They are That's on the wonderful. job training side. So. That's wonderful. We definitely need to be talking about being a community partner. Yes. Yeah. Oh, we would love yes. it. We're going to definitely be a community partner. Y'all have always showed me such a good time this week being on. I'd love to come back. I'll be some alums with us, too. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, it just slipped my mind. I was going to say we can't sign up for the program. No, we heard about the stipend, but it's 18 to 24. I know, right? <laughs> I remember Joe. Well, he can't imagine 18 to 24. <laughs> Nothing. I, I was just talking to Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, um, but, oh, where are you exactly located? Oh, that's a great question. So we are at uh, 136 South Adams Street, which is off the JSU Parkway. Um, used to be a coffee shop. I remember that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is us. So we've got a big, beautiful porch, um, right. great open space. And I do, we are working very hard to try and reopen the cafe as well. Okay. Um, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have that going. But we would love to welcome the community back in. Um, I know there were a lot of meetings and discussions that happened there, and we would love to see that happen again. So yeah. that's something we're working on as well. Yeah, it's amazing. I used to see about the meetings all the time. Kia, no one, mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Everyone says it. <laughs> I'm sure I was wrong. But, <laughs> but yeah, we, hopefully all of us, Adrian. Wanda, myself, and Yolanda, when she gets back, will be coming back so we can take a tour. Yes, we, we would love to have you. Maybe we can do a little live show. Oh, now that yeah. sounds good. Some yeah. real coffee and conversation. Yeah. All right. Y'all going to get to learn <laughs> Caitlin behind the scenes. Oh, okay. I'm not yeah. turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll bring you that. We'll make sure we have the coffee for sure. So, <laughs> so do you all have students now? 
We are about to. Tomorrow, I think we so y'all get real students. Y'all can put your hand on. <laughs> oh, yes. All, All right. right. <laughs> we just graduated six, and they are fabulous. Are you trying shows. to imply that people have been putting false names on paper pretending to have students in programs that receive funding and federal dollars? Is that the thing that you're trying to imply? But you're also saying that Rico Jackson isn't doing that? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was just that was just for clear. Uh, they are very real. <laughs> yes. And that's you know, and, and you and you know what, Kate, what I would like to uh, see too. Um, I know you all you said you have a graduating plan. Mm -hmm. If you can, maybe you can bring one or two of the youth oh, to come by. Yes. They can come on the radio and talk about their experience. Yes. So you know, we uh uh our listeners can get an insight and maybe they can take some of their children by the ear and drag them down there. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I think that would be good. So we're inviting you and your students back. All right. So they can tell us, you know, how they enjoyed the program and what they're doing. Give our kids some insight. Absolutely. Would love to. Know. I'm sure some of their parents would love to come. Oh, too. yes, ma'am. And, and we we'll take you through the Child Devil's Museum and everything. Oh, wonderful. Yes, I would love that. Great, great. So one more thing before you go, I'd like to ask. Uh, with the program, mm -hmm. can you attend if you do have a high school diploma? Yes, you don't need one, but yes, you can if you do. We have it's about half, so mm -hmm. half our students come in with um, high school diplomas or GEDs, mm -hmm. and half don't. And if they want to earn their GED, that's something we help them get up and running so that's they can great. go into a GED program. Mm -hmm. That's yes. great. That's excellent. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we want to sit down and talk with you guys about partnering with Rico Jackson. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to come by and we just want to view the area and we're going to get the kids in and, and that's what we basically do here. Wonderful. I love that. Great. Oh, great. I got a few I need. I'm a drag over there. Come on. Bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by today. Of course. Thank it. you for having me. And definitely, uh, she will be back, guys. Yes. Definitely, because she is a partner of WNPR. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to get these kids on track. Let's go. Let's, let's go. <laughs> we got to do it. We got to do it. Absolutely. Yes. And thank you, uh, Kate, for stopping yes. by. Thanks for and, having me. Uh, uh, we're going to stay in touch mm -hmm. so we can get everything rolling with that. Yes. yes. Get yes, our definitely. alums out here. There's a hundred of them. them. <laughs> we won't bring them all at once. And we're not <laughs> babies, please, because we, we, you know, we're running out of room over here. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. YouTube love. And we'll see you soon. Oh, take care. Um, You know, every year we do um, our Easter basket giveaway. And this year, the Easter basket giveaway will be the Friday before Easter, which is Good Friday. And I have a young man that is dear to my heart, at Mr. Eric T. Collins. He is six years old. And this young man wrote a book. Aww. So we're so WPR is sponsoring his book. It's called The Blank, The Plant Based Party. And he wrote this book. You all wouldn't believe it, but this this young man wrote this on his own. And um, we're going to be putting them in our Easter baskets this year. Oh, excellent. Yes. And uh, and it, it's a cute book. I've been reading it. Thank you, Eric Collins. And thank your mom and dad for allowing us to uh, receive uh, the books. And uh, we... Uh, so if you all, you know, would like for your kids to receive one of these books, you know, we will be giving them out with the baskets on Friday before Easter, which is Good Friday. And uh, one thing I like about uh, this family, they have their young man focused. Absolutely. You know, because a lot of kids at six years old is, you know, cussing us out, telling us what we need to do, go somewhere and sit down. Some of them curse you know? real well. Too. Yeah, real well. You know, so... Um, if that's a I am really proud of this young man, and uh, I want to thank the family that uh, has nurtured this child to get him at a young age to get started on making and having a business of his own. Absolutely, definitely. And in 
I mean, this is a beautiful book. The illustrations, yes. The cover, I mean, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Well, his mom and dad is oh, is, and the yeah. pictures inside are absolutely beautiful too. Excellent representation, and it's something good. Uh, are we going to do a plant based eating challenge uh, this no. year? Okay, we're moving on to other news. What? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Eric, but I, I see. I know your daddy been trying to get me, and uh, they have a. Um, uh, a natural store on Fair Street. What's the name of it? Oh, Herbal, Herbal Blessings. Blessings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and you all go down and support Herbal Blessings. They are the one who make the lemonade. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Go down and support Herbal Blessings, and uh, they give you everything you need for your body and everything. So you know, and this is their young man. So let's just try to support our, our communities with our black businesses. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. And speaking of supporting black businesses, hello, Ace Lay. Do you guys need any videography done? Anything like that? You need to contact Miss Adrian Stucky, Ace Lay Productions. Yeah, I got a big project for, but I told Felicia you'll have to go in and hide. Um, uh -uh, I'll be waiting on you, Miss Wanda. But you know what? I, but I reminded her of that beautiful magazine that you laid out. Um, this year, um, I'm working on celebrating the life and legacy of my dad, Mr. Charles Evers. I'm going to do a banquet. Of course, we're going to have Bobby Rush. Is I'm not doing a blues show. I just want everybody to know Curtis McKenzie is doing the blues show in honor of dad. And I'm going to do the banquet on or around his birthday this year. Um, life and legacy of Charles Evers. I want people to understand, you know, I hear people talk about what he did, what he didn't do. You know, he was a woman, not he was this. No, he was not. This man stood up for all races. Um so what we're going to be doing, I'm working with Joyce Lawson from the Civil Rights Museum. We're going to be pulling videos. And my nephew, uh, Charles, uh, uh, in Hattiesburg, um, he has some videos. We're going to put it all together. And um, we're going to set up a screen. Hopefully, we'll, I'll let you know the day is going to be. I, he loved King Edward Hotel. So that's where I'm going to do the banquet. Mm -hmm. And I'll let everybody know if they want to be affiliated, we're going to have a book. Adrian Stuckey is in charge of the book. Ah. She just dropped the phone on me. But um, we're going to have we're going to have a book. And I just want people to understand that dad was more than just in radio business. Or, you know, you would hear the people say we sold moonshine. Well, we all sold moonshine. I would. He was a civil rights activist. You know, he took over when his brother left off. His brother's life was cut short, and dad made sure whatever he had to do for his brother's name, he did it. So, you know, when people talk about, well, you know, Charles Evans is a Republican, Charles Evans was a Charles Evans Republican. Right. He was a Democrat before. But when he had to take care of Fayette, anybody in Fayette would know. He had to do what he had to do, take care of his people. This is why we have a problem. We don't do what we need to do to take care of us. We so busy stabbing each other in the back. We so busy taking from one another. We so busy just talking about each other. You know, I've heard people talk about what Will Smith did to Chris Rock. I know Chris Rock. I, I, I did concerts with Chris Rock. I've hung out with Chris Rock. But let me tell you something. Sometime enough is enough. And that man was tired. His family has been through scrutiny for about two, three years. I don't care who she slept with. I don't care who he slept with. But this woman has... Uh, a disease, alopecia, and anybody would know whether you're black or white about your hair. Mm -hmm. You got a problem now, Jada, baby. You were beautiful, baby. I have to throw it out there to you. And when he made that crack, I didn't think it was funny. Mm -hmm. Everybody laughed. Well, you know what? 
I don't mean no harm. But sometimes you just need to keep your mouth shut. And maybe what Will Smith did on that stage, mm -hmm. a lot of y'all might sit down somewhere. With, you know what, though? Because a lot of people is tired. That's right. I think it's important for us to understand a couple of things with this situation. We have such a mindset of choosing sides with things. Right. We need to understand there can be yes and yes and no and no. How about Chris Rock was wrong and Will Smith was wrong? Yes. But Will Smith did what humans do. He defended his wife. No, I mean messed up. People mess up. You, we, we have this mindset of thinking that because people have a certain status and money that they're perfect. You look around. If you live in the Jackson area, look around yourself. You should know better. And everybody who's picking a side on this, they're just really trying to exasperate how they already feel anyway. This incident has done nothing but shift conversation to it and distract from our, from really pressing issues that actually matter. You know, we talked about it. Turn your radio down. Turn your radio down. You know, we talked about it last night on the show, but, it, you know, it's really, I really just like to see where people's mindset lies when it comes to these things. But the truth of the matter is, when this is all said and done, Chris Rock is going to be a rich black man with no issues with bad water. And Will Smith is going to be a rich black man with no issues of bad water. Neither one of them will have waste back up into their house. Neither one of them live in a neighborhood with overgrowth, uh, with houses that look like uh, junk properties that look like jungles and wilderness in city limits. Neither one of them suffer from those issues. And neither and, one of them <clears throat> is not going to suffer from it. So while we're sitting around talking about what could have, should have, would have, what uh, Chris Rock should have did, what Will Smith should have did, guess what? Their houses are clean, their grass is cut, their children is clean, everybody walking around, you know, everybody have, you know, one or two out of the family. But our problem is this, and what Will Smith did, you know, I, I'm not going to say he was wrong, but what Chris Rock did to a woman, like a lot of you all do to a woman, you're wrong. I would say he wrong now. He wrong yeah. because he did. He, he scrutinized this woman. She's going through something about her hair. Right. You know, we can go put a wig on. We can go get some hair. You know, we can do this, that, and the other. But when it comes down to just and 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 that was not a joke. Gi Jane. You know, first of all, she's a white woman. You know, Demi Moore, and that was a movie. You know, so he didn't even know the woman's name. Really? But y'all talking about Will Smith shouldn't have hit him. Well, first of all, you have to look at the family. I also think that we need to look at this. It kills me when people say things like, oh, that look bad for all black folks. Like, please stop this. The, the these these people are in a whole different world, yeah. a whole different world yes. from the rest of us. And while we continue this mindset, if you think if you cross your legs, smile, do everything pleasantly, you're going to be accepted by those who don't accept you in the first place. You crazy. <laughs> like this has been proven time and time and time again. Booker T. Washington back in the day had that same theory. Now, this this is an honorable, notable man, but he was wrong. He was right and wrong at the same time. Yes. Yes, we do need to uh, become a people that are taking care of ourselves. We do need to uplift ourselves in the right. But we don't need to do that in the hopes of a white man or woman who is a racist accepting you. Do you really think they're going to say, you know what? That's a good Negro right there. They, they must all be good. No, no, you are not. You are considered the exception, not the rule for people who have that mindset. Right. You think they looked at Oprah and were like, oh, man, look at this. These need these some good Negroes. They can earn money. No, she is the exception in whoever loves her mind. Not the rule. Same thing for those who love Barack Obama. Exception, not the rule. For those who have that mindset. We got to get out of this collective cloak of all things bad following all of us. You're never going to get to a point where those who deem you subservient as being equal. Right. So get out of there. You need to be able to uplift your own mindset above here. 
Carla, we're sorry. We forgot you was on the air. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Uh, this is Silky. Wanda, I really do appreciate what you said. Um, you're the first one that I have heard said that. You never know what you would actually do unless you're in the situation. Me, myself, I know. Like, uh, I told Felicia and last night what happened to me in my hand you know it's a it's a hurting thing when you lose all your hair for a woman like for a man you know some of them don't give a gun but me i know how it feels and i have that disease also alopecia um i suppose i was born with it you know, yes, I have to wear wigs. You know, that's why they make wigs. I pay, um, I used to pay $250 back in the day, every two weeks to get my hair fixed. Um, put in the weave and all that kind of mess. You know, that's no fun. It's really no fun. Right. And I really do appreciate that one. Well, thank you, love. And and, you that, and and that's what I'm saying. Now, now, you know, Will Smith might have been wrong. In my opinion, when it comes to Will Smith, and he was standing up there trying to apologize, that, you know, he, he won an Oscar. Mm -hmm. But you think he cared about that Oscar? I know that's right. See, let me you tell you something. When we work. get tired of being discriminated and mm -hmm. humiliated, you know, you don't know what might happen. That's you know, right. and but this is what people really don't know, look at. Uh, but who really knows the real situation? Nobody but Will Smith, uh, Chris Rock, and his wife. Right. Whoever. We never know. We can sit our behinds back and criticize. Like, I had a lady that said the other day that I'm violent. <laughs> Please. Yeah, I heard about your little co-host over there. I heard about what y'all did. I ain't even going to say. <laughs> well, well, Miss. I can't talk about that. No, we're not either. Don't incriminate on the air. But I can't talk about that. Um, I had a lady that said, I'm violent. Well, you know, that's not the truth. And talk about other people need to look at that again. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. For a woman, for a woman, when you lose all your hair and you know your hair is it, it's not so it's bad. not even about that. I remember years ago when Whoopi Goldberg's teenage daughter was pregnant and everybody's out there talking. Everybody's Everybody out there talking. talking. Whoopi Goldberg got up on the Grammys and read every last one of them about her child. And then nobody has said nothing else about it because see, people get tired, regardless yeah. whether you're rich or poor. Yeah. You know, it doesn't make is, sense. Uh, and some of these women, they going around trying to act like they're so holy, then then down. Stop it. Because well, you know, it's a lot of them gonna burn in hell with gasoline draws yes, on. So I'm just waiting on that day. Yes, they uh, they are gonna burn in hell on what? earth. I'm I do not have a heaven or a hell to put nobody in. Me either. But um, we should stop trying to go around trying to act like we such a goody do. I mean, goody two shoes. That's why I don't have that many women friends. Let me tell you something. I might do and say a lot of stuff, but I, I'm going to say what I say. God knows my yeah. heart. But I don't walk around here being no more. I know what family I came from. I'm not no better than nobody else. A lot of us think we better than anybody else, but I'm not. I pay my bills. I struggle. I have family issues. You know, I'm not walking on nobody's water and nobody's cloud. That's right. But it's one thing that people can tell you about filthy. I can protect my own. 
sometimes you have to. I don't have to have sometimes you just have to. to protect me. And when and, and you know, like I, I said, both of them was wrong, but I commend Will yeah. Smith for standing up for his wife. Yeah, he was wrong. I don't care what I nobody can, say. I can say he's wrong and also say that I know <laughs> beyond a shadow of a doubt. I'm not saying in that particular situation, but I know I'd be ready to throw blows in a different, you know, yeah. depending on what the he situation is. Because see, when, because see, when you get yeah. built up and you Wait. get sick and tired, yeah. you know and you know what? And I commend him because how many men that sick with a woman and don't protect that woman? The women is one. They sit there and look at you like you're slow. Wait, Miss Wanda. But now she's seeing it over and over and over and over again. Yeah, so he's going to protect her from that. So he actually he, ma he made it worse. Exactly. He made it worse. Well, you know what? But, he might have made it. Because you let me tell you something. They, 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 let me tell you something. Like, like uh, they said, she has enough money to go buy her some hair if she That's wanted to. Right. But she's That's making right. a statement. That's yeah, right. I mean, and you shouldn't um, have to wear it if you don't. Right, hair don't, don't make a person. That I used to tell them all the time, baby. Hair don't make a person. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank sorry. you so much but for calling us. I just wanted to uh, say that, Wanda. I respect you, not just because you said that. You said something the way I feel. I'm happy somebody see it the way I do. Yes. Because I am not a goody two shoes. No, I'm you not. Don't never think that Silky is a goody two shoes. But I, I can go both. I want to say, and I don't care if you don't like. All right, love. Thank you, love. Peace out. Thank Peace you. out, Miss Silky. Where is that? Uh, calling you on the air. There is no call in the queue. Ain't no call Thank in the you. queue. Call in your ear. Uh, yes, uh, I just want to think back on what Miss Tiffany said. You're the first person I heard come out and say that Chris Rock deserved what he got. He said he made a patriot's joke and Will Smith dropped the case out of his mouth. Thank you. No, I said that both of them was wrong. And yeah, I agree with that. I, I, I commend but, Will Smith was, for defending his it wife. Was, it was, and it was, it was tasteless. Right. You know, yes, and the man is. reacted in defending his wife. And I don't blame Will Smith because let me tell you something. People get tired, whether they in the limelight or they in a dim light. People get tired of being talked about. This man's life has been scrutiny most of his life. And for you to stand up there and think you cracking a joke, he, you don't know what was all built up inside of Will Smith. You don't know what he's been going through. But then when you cross that line, then yeah, he took you know, he did that. And okay, yeah. he defended his wife. And I and I and I commend him on that. Absolutely. So do I. Well, he yeah. could have did it behind the closed curtain, but he, I, I mean, hey, yeah. you know, it, it just struck what, what he did. I don't think it was about defending the wife. What do you remember think Chris about? Rock did a whole segment in 2016 at the Oscars? Did a whole segment on Jada Pinkett when she was boycotting the Oscars. But let me tell you Oscars something. Built but, up. but let me tell you, it, it, it just built up because what he said, you know, you know, it just built up. They, and see Chris but they've Rock. been seen together since then. And I, I don't yeah, even know if it was that necessarily. I think people are forgetting earlier in that night. Uh, several people threw shots her way. Yeah. Several people on that night threw shots her way. Uh, even Regina Hall or King, I don't know, I get them confused. But anyway, she threw a shot her way about the open marriage thing. You know, when she was bringing the men on stage, she was like, you will, you marry well, but Jado don't mind, though, anyway. You know, and everybody laughed at that. So it was constant. Yeah, you just constant. happened. Uh, Chris Rock happened to have been the straw, yeah, the I believe, straw that broke the camel's back. When looking over there, you know, looking at like people say, looking over there's white face shoes and pure disgust. I know she was like, why did we pick these seats in the front anyway? But still, and all, they they shouldn't have nothing. They shouldn't have nothing to say about their sex life, their private life. Well, that's gonna happen when you're in a public guy, especially when you put it out there. Yeah, he, he wrote a right. book. Put it out she there. has they put a it out show. There. They put, yeah. They put it out there. And when people talk, this is the world we live in. And on top of that, we have social media to couple with it. So 
they put it out there. Yeah. So it's to be expected. Well, but that's why he's wrong. That doesn't necessarily Ooh. mean that you are a you should be uh -uh. a target face you know, to face. You know, at Will Station, don't you? <laughs> but you know why Will Smith is wrong? Because like Felicia said, he's a superstar. He's a celebrity. He put his business out there. They get talked about all the time, and right. he should have handled it. He should have hired now, Chris. But if you know what? Up there, he should have handled it. But you know what? Should have put like that. the woods are, I think, much easier when you have time to think. When you yeah. acting on emotion yeah, in the yeah, moment, you're yeah. not necessarily gonna make but you know, right it. It all depends on your feelings, right about that. Because Jada, are you know they we already know that they they have an open relationship, right? So they don't care. But see, when when it affects your mind and your body, you know she's always been recognized as one of the beautiful black women. You know, little bitty girl. You know, coming out. Out of uh, the Bronx, the Bronx with Tupac, wherever they came from, and her hair, you know, you would always see her, and that was her hair, you know. So when you lose something of yours, you know that that takes a that takes a talk. Let me tell you something. When I was taking some medicine, my hair fell out. Right. It fell out. So you know, a lot of people tell me, "Oh, she bald headed." Well, you know, I was bald headed for a reason. But it wasn't because of alopecia, because of the medicine I was taking. Right. So I would just, you know, I already, I already had a little, little good little hair. Thank you, Mama. And uh, I would just put some gel and stuff and keep it moving. Right. You know, but that took a toll because I knew that my hair could grow. And when my hair wasn't growing with that little medicine they gave me, I said, wait a minute, something ain't right here. Right. So. We have to understand that, like Miss Silky said, you don't know what frame of mind. And, and 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 one thing I, I commend because a lot of men don't do this. Mm -hmm. They don't stand up for their women. Now he might have been wrong with standing up the wrong way, but at least he took the initiative to stand up for his wife, regardless of whether she's sleeping with all of them in Hollywood. Yeah. He still took the initiative. You know, a lot of men, we got husbands, boyfriends, girlfriend, whatever. They 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 ain't like they scared to stand up for somebody. Yeah. So I'm gonna make this announcement. I'm sorry. Oh no no you're fine because I, I do want to double back to the conversation about here. I, I, I would love for us to take this opportunity of these rich people who are gonna be all right. Uh, I would love to take right. this opportunity. They are right. <laughs> I love to take this opportunity in the midst of their whatever this is going on because they making more money from it and no, talk we, about we the, the Crown nothing. Act legislation. But I want to announce this flyer really quickly. The IRS Taxpayer Experience Days um, through the Taxpayer Advocate Service. Uh, they are. This is supported by the Taxpayers Advocate Service uh, to help taxpayers during this year's filing season. The IRS is offering special in-person Saturday hours at many taxpayer assistance centers across the country. The Taxpayer Advocate Service is partnering with the IRS and will be available at many events. Uh, May 14th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. No appointments necessary. And I know this is after the deadline, but yes, they will be available. If you want to find out more information about this, you can go to www.irs.gov slash Saturday hours. Uh, and again, this is to help taxpayers during this year's filing season. This is absolutely free at no cost. And you can find more information by going online. Again, www.irs.gov forward slash Saturday hours. Now, go ahead. <laughs> what were you about to say, Wanda? Okay, know. but what about the crazy fans who don't have a clear understanding? Now they're going around Will Smithing people. You know, some people don't look at the support. <laughs> you know, my daughter said well, she went to school yesterday. Everybody slept. You know, but like I said, are you serious? But like yes. I said, both of them, like I said, both of them was wrong. But Will you know Smith why? could have handled it in a different uh, situation, but his emotions. Yeah, yeah. And if I, if I, if it were and me, and they just probably I, got two million dollars off a couple of yeah. days. So do do we get paid for this? Please, okay. I'm I'm not a proponent of violence, but if I were in that mindset, I would hope that I could curb my emotions long enough. When the when they went on commercial break, I would have went back there with a smile on my face to yeah. see my friend back there behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I see that's yeah. what I'm saying. But you know, it just it just and, escalated. And I would have had a conversation. You know? yeah. yeah, it may have been a silent conversation. I don't know. 
but I would have had the conversation. No, I would have went to the microphone and had said his handled it differently. I would have just handled it behind the scenes. So now Jay was more embarrassed. I mean, you don't know that she's seen happen to me. Yeah, she but they keep alopecia me. jokes all over the place. Well, right? like I, I said, you know, you know, you know, you have you have to put us, you know, you're you're in the pub, you're in the eye. You know, we talking um, about alopecia, but Wanda said something very important. She when you were taking medication and she has an autoimmune disease. So at a minimum, let's take these moments to look at the fact a lot more black people are suffering with autoimmune disease. How is that affecting us? Let's take something meaningful from this other than I personally don't care about these rich people. I like I, I just don't. I don't. <laughs> it was a moment. Oh, sorry for you, Chris. Yeah. I'm more sorry for the young man who got killed who was just on his right. way to school. I'm much yeah. more sorry for him and his family. What about them? I don't care about this like that. I really don't. But that's and you just know, me. And, 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 and you know what kills me about rich people? Let me say this. I can't even I use see the words all I really want to use. Now, they have all the money in the world. And uh, I see all these commercials where, like, St. Jude Hospital, the uh, Animal Rescue League is asking for money, this, that, and the other, everybody. You know, why don't y'all focus on donating y'all money? Y'all wants to donate money to Africa, buying schools over there. Y'all wants to donate to uh, this, that, and the other. But my thing is this. You all have been blessed. That that goes for Mississippians who got money. Let's talk about that got money. Um, you all have been blessed. Y'all run around here with your big fancy cars and your big fancy houses. Donate some of that money to some of these domestic violence. You know, maybe Will Smith might have a problem. Maybe we might need to get him in the program. I don't know. But the problem, the point of and the he can afford to get in the program. And That's what I'm saying. You program. know, everybody talking about, oh, he may need that. But he can afford for them and sitting there discussing with each other the best me, method. Let me tell y'all something. WPR donates to St. Jude Hospital every yes. month. Yes. Every month. Do you yes. hear me? Absolutely. When I go to Memphis, I go in there just to see the hospital. And coordinating an you event know, for Blair Let's Batson. focus on, yeah. Right Larry now. Batson. Yeah. Because you, because well, you, you, because you believe in local. Or something? What? You know how they was raising money for Ukraine. Right, mm -hmm. and the people. But what about the areas in the U.S. that look like war zones? Talking about Jackson. <laughs> Not only Jackson, but no water, you war zones, something. no food. Let's, when are we okay. going to do something? Let, for let's stop going abroad. Come on, charity begins at home. Let's talk about the war zone of Jackson. Let's get that uh -oh. together. This is a war zone, okay? And for all you all who um, keep your yards nice and live in a nice neighborhood, obviously I'm not talking about you. I know there's some decent looking areas in Jackson. But for the rest who live next door to these properties that are overgrown, and yeah, looking like that, it's j root. But for the rest of us, it's, and I'm not even talking about the crime per se, it should be a crime, and it is actually against yeah. the law. They have ordinances on the book to stop letting this property be overgrown like it is and coming up with every excuse. It's acceptable in some areas. It's well, not acceptable all, in others. Well, first of all, we should... And we let's should, look at who owns the property. Well, first of all, we should need an ordinance for us to tell us to go out there and cut our grass. Or no, I'm not us talking about us. us. Our hood, I'm our not house. talking about us. Well, what, well, whatever what about we your own, neighbor? What about the, the okay? What about the properties that I'm getting now? I'm talking about you have properties that are owned by people who don't live in Jackson, right? Who don't give a crap about Jackson, who, right. but work for Jackson, and they receiving reaping the benefits that were set out there for the average citizen. Now you just spoke about pe rich people giving money. It's a lot of nonprofits around here getting money because they think in their mind that they're giving it to people who are going to do the right thing. That is nothing more than another pimp game that's being run okay. on Jackson. It's poverty pimping going on and, oh, the, and the poverty <laughs> pimps got 501c3s and poor pimps. They get rich on poverty. Right. They get rich on poverty. They, they grant seekers and they full of crap. Well, let me see some tangible differences you make. They get awards every day. We're telling people to put down the mic, man. Put put down these awards. How about that? I'm sick of it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Right. You right though. Around here buying up property. Who do you know who makes an average of fifty thousand dollars? Who can afford to upkeep on ten to twelve houses? Now I'm all for people coming up with real estate, but it shouldn't be off of a program that was meant for citizens. 
right. to be able to expand their profit. It shouldn't be off the right. back of those in these neighborhoods. You got people who did what they thought was the right thing. They invested in Jackson. They own houses in Jackson. But as they age out, they're living next door to rental properties that are owned by other folks who live on somewhere else. They live in Madison. They live in other areas and they get to drive away and say, that's a shame and come back and collect rent for a, a, a house. They're not even doing the bare minimum for in some cases. And in other cases, nobody lives there. And you got a, a overgrown property that, again, looks like a third world country. That is, so at a bare minimum, instead of us talking about our police and crime, let's get these departments in the city of Jackson to do their job. Right. Yes. And, and, and please don't call up here talking about we black people got to stick together. What they got to do with people doing their jobs? It's called accountability. I'm not. I'm sick of it. That's not. That's not for dictionary now. Please, it needs to be right back up that's in. That's not for dictionary. My thing is with Jackson. Jackson could be a better place, but that's it's not. And uh, and and we as people got to quit making excuses. And making excuses on everybody else. If your yard, if, if your neighbor's yard, and sometimes we might have people that's unable to clean their yard. Okay, if you got a lawn mower, if you got a yard man, go over there and cut the people grass. Right, right. They might come out and say thank you. We don't know what's going on inside the house, but if now if you got able-bodied folks walking around and the yard look like, uh, I bite you. Yeah, then it's time. But these are people that like living like this. And once we, once, uh, you know, I don't want my property value going down because you want to look like you live on green acres. Oh, it's funny you talk about property value. That's another thing. <laughs> the assessed values of these properties. It's amazing how they go down quick when they're black on. Isn't that amazing to y'all? Yeah. As soon as a couple of uh, Caucasians buy it or they see a few Caucasians move in, that's when it begins to skyrocket. And that's when services come into an area. So I'm not even mad at gentrification in the way that a lot of people are. I don't give right. a crap about some elements of it, but I'm pissed off about the fact that equity means that just because I live in an area where the property value may right. be less than 80000 doesn't mean that I should not receive the services in my community I'm that everybody else does. I'm on Section 16 land right now in Madison, in Rankin County. And it's uh, I mean, what I pay out there, you know, and the sad part is with when we paying, you know, like uh, it was just say, how about the 16 section lane that people live in Madison or Rankin County? Yeah. Sad part is I could never move my tower. If I bought a piece of land, I could never move my tower because I don't know who did that, that, that lease. Yeah. But it's forever. Well, really? And that's a look, and hey, as they say, that's another story for another time. It's forever. I mm. mean, maybe I, you know, and I need to think about that because it's forever. So if I found a piece of property and I wanted to move my tower, there would be no way I can move it because it's forever. Oh, the way that it, yeah. So. Which we'll, we'll, we'll talk we'll, about, we'll that. Talk about yeah, that. The you know, that was And this is why a lot of people, yeah. you know, well, I mean, a lot of people got off of Section 16 land, didn't they? Energy? Uh, well, we, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk yeah, about Yeah, we're going to definitely. And on that note. had up here actually was leaning into this, so we'll talk about that. Okay. And on that note, um, we have run one minute, of, two minutes across our time. Reverend Joe looking at us like we're slow. You know, he was late this morning, y'all. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're taking two minutes of his time. <laughs> and um and until next week, I'm Wanda Evers. And Felicia Tripp. And I'm Adrian Stecky. Peace, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can we call a pastor real right at his church? He can't pass the